What's up everybody, King Louis here with a patch review. Chivalry 2 just got a huge content update. Quite surprisingly in my opinion, as their whole update cycle seemed to be a bit delayed and I thought the content update will be released at the end of August at the earliest. But hey, here it is. In this video I won't go over every single patch note, but rather give you guys an overview of the most important changes and additions this update brings to the game. Let's get into it. First and foremost, Chivalry has gotten two new maps. Gallencourt is the new team objective map, an epic city siege that plays in the late medieval times. Visually, the map is like most other Chivalry 2 maps, absolutely stunning. It has that vibe of a noble place where the wealthy Agathians live. The attackers have to destroy the fleet, get into the city and as a final objective, destroy the holy tomb in the church, whereas 12 of the defenders get to play as battle monks. The second new map is Courtyard, a team deathmatch, free for all and arena map. Scale wise this map is a middle ground between the big wide open Wardenglade map and the small and cramped tournament grounds and fighting pit maps. Courtyard is also beautiful to look at and a very nice addition to the map rotation. The second big addition this update brings and the part that I am personally most hyped about is the new arena mode, which is basically a 3v3 skirmish mode whereas the first team that wins 5 rounds wins the game. I know most players play chivalry for the large scale battles, but there are also a lot of people that find the 64 player modes with all his projectiles, backstabbing and cluster fights too chaotic and prefer combat with manageable team sizes. I played 5 or 6 of these arena games yesterday and while pretty fun in general, most of the matches were very one sided and probably not very enjoyable for the losing side. I am not sure if this game mode will have the necessary player base to support it, but Tornbanner should probably think about some kind of skill based matchmaking system for this mode to not scare away new and very casual players. The content update also introduced over 60 new cosmetic items. Weapon wise there are new longsword skins for Agatha and new mace and two handed hammer skins for both factions. The new skins look awesome but have insanely high level requirements. There is nothing wrong with that per se since people like to grind for stuff and at the moment there isn't really much to grind for anyways. The thing is that you can also buy these skins for a few bucks in the cash shop and skip the level requirement, which is a bit disappointing. There are also a bunch of pretty cool new shields and new heraldry. Armor wise there are two new Agathian knight skins for female knights, as well as two new Agathian footman skins. The added armor skins look pretty good in my opinion, but the game in general is still heavily lacking in armor diversity and I hope that future updates will bring more and more much needed variety in that regard. There are also two new female character voices, the barmaid and the evil queen. Another thing that the content patch brought to the game is a UI overhaul. The whole menu navigation got cleaner and prettier. Matchmaking now lets you choose between 64 player queue with the new maps only, 64 players mixed mode with all maps, 40 players mixed mode with all maps and free for all. Then there is the separate 3v3 arena mode queue and the server browser for PC lobbies. With the new UI also comes a stat page, where all kinds of player, class and weapon stats are tracked. This stat page is currently in preview slash beta mode and as of now doesn't seem to display stats correctly. Next on the list is the new arrow cam. Once you shoot an arrow, you can now press a key to follow it along its path. A neat little thing to play around with, but not exactly a game changer. Beside all these new features, the new content update also introduced tons of gameplay and combat changes, as well as bug fixes. In fact, there are so many that I won't go over every single patch note one by one, but rather talk about the in my opinion most important changes and fixes. I will leave a link to the full patch notes in the video description below for those who are interested. Let's start with the elephant in the room the partying issues. Crossplay parties, as already mentioned in some earlier development block, are looked into and will come at a later point. Beside that, there were some fixes to the party system, but there are also still some known issues, especially when it comes to consoles. 
The parting issues are definitely something that should have been sorted out pre-release and are probably the single most thing that hurt Chivalry 2's reputation the most. Next we have combat and weapon balance changes. Crouching now costs stamina and also stops stamina regen. Constantly crouching during combat looks pretty bad and cheesy and people definitely overused it, so I'm fine with that change. Combo timing penalty should not be applied when an opponent gets put into parry break. This is actually a pretty nice change. Pre-patch it was not so easy to punish a disarm unless you knew your opponent is gonna lose his weapon. Now you can input a combo right after you see the disarm and the combo attack will still come out. There have been a handful of changes that all aim at protecting teammates from each other. Spike traps now don't deal damage to teammates anymore. Teammates cannot flinch each other's parries or reposts anymore. Blocking attacks from teammates no longer consumes stamina and teammates also can no longer damage each other's shields. A pretty commonly known bandage exploit where you could jab at a certain time to cancel the bandage animation but keep the healing effect has been fixed. Special and charging attack damage values for various weapons have been increased. I didn't have a chance to test the exact values after the patch yet, but some of the charging attacks dealt ridiculously low damage. A sprint attack that needs several seconds to charge shouldn't do less damage than a simple heavy attack. Turn caps for horizontal and overhead attacks have been slightly decreased, which should help a bit to prevent spinning attacks and extreme drags. The turn caps while holding up the parry also have been reduced slightly, which is a nerf to 1vx since it makes it harder to parry consecutive attacks from different sides. The javelin and the one-handed spear, which got its animations reworked and added again, now have a second stab instead of a horizontal strike. They also fixed the bug where you could sometimes counter special attacks and kicks. And last but not least, they increased early release for stabs, which was absolutely necessary. This is something that I complained about in one of my previous videos. The pre-patch stabs simply applied damage too early and made the game feel glitchy and out of sync. Next we have animation changes. Honestly, there is nothing super exciting here to talk about, mainly some minor tweaks and fixes to visual glitches. Probably more interesting are the map balance changes. Some of the maps were very one-sided, Fallmire as the main offender. With this update, every single team objective map received some form of balancing. They also fixed the slaughter of Coxwell exploit on the last objective. VIPs in general now receive more health when healed. The VIPs indeed feel a bit squishy, but I think the main problem is that they take too much damage from all kinds of projectiles. Team auto balance no longer shuffles players at the end of the game, which was super annoying. At last, some misc changes that I find worth mentioning. There is now a better indicator for counters in the game. You will now see a very noticeable blue visual cue whenever you perform a successful counter. Pre-patch there were only some blue sparks and a small successful counter info, which was super easy to miss in the heat of a fight, especially for new players that were not quite familiar with the combat mechanics. I like the new indicator a lot. The opening cinematics have been removed from free for all mode, which was long overdue. And players can now be muted, individually and globally. Alright guys, that's it for this first impressions video. I think I covered the most important changes and additions this first big content update brought to the game. All in all, I'm pretty happy with what they did with this first update. Yes, the game is still rough around some edges and needed a bit more time to release in a better state, but I think the Torn Banner is on a good way if they keep their update schedule from now on. Let me know in the comment section what your thoughts about this content updates are. If you enjoyed this video, then please leave a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button to not miss out on any future content. As always, thank you all for watching and see you soon.